Welcome to the <laughs> lamp. Lamp. The lamp. I, I can't, can't see. see anything. Somebody Where's turned the, the lamp? lamp on. So yeah, this is the lamp. It's our uh, weekly podcast presented by the Cook and Lantern. I am Cook and Lantern publisher Pat Muncy, and with me is my partner in crime, Ed Fonts. Oh, where's the sun at? I don't know. Do you have your glasses on? I can't tell. I have mine on. Oh. We're testing out the Eclipse glasses, uh, or a, a type of Eclipse glasses, that, uh, that will be needed to watch the Eclipse on April 8th. Um, and there are a lot of activities that are building up in the community leading up to that. Last night, uh, IU Kokomo had a presentation on the eclipse and gave out some of these. Uh, i got to take these off. I can't see a thing. I'm working blind. There we go. Hey, look, mm, there's a camera. I'm working without a net. Yeah, so there yeah. you go. Yeah. So, yeah, last night they had a, they had an eclipse program. Uh, Dr. Patrick Model, their physics professor and, uh, and the guru of all things IUK Observatory, uh, put on the event. Uh, I'm hoping it was very well attended. Unfortunately, I had a prior commitment, but I'm a fan of, uh, of Dr. Model and the IUK uh, science program, and most definitely their, uh, their monthly uh, observatory open houses. Uh, you should definitely check those out if you haven't been there. You get to look through the big telescope of what IUK does with their observatory. Uh, I really encourage people to go out and, uh, and, uh, and observe the skies. Um, they will have another event on February 26th. That's kind of a big event. So it's a Monday night, um, and they have a dinner with the bad astronomer. I believe his name is Phil Pettit or Pyatt. I'm not sure. Hmm. Anyway, he uh, he's a bit popular on Twitter or X as they call it now, I suppose, uh, because he's the type of guy that uh, that will look at. Uh, science in movies and pop culture and say it works that way, it doesn't work that way, uh, or he'll, he's more than happy to explain how uh, real science works, and he's got a bit of a following, and he's particularly uh, enthused by astronomy. He's spoken at NASA, uh, among many other places, and he will be here on the 26th for a dinner uh, that I believe there are still a couple tickets left. Hopefully by the time this airs, there will still be a couple tickets left. You can go on to the IUK website and you can register for that. It is $50 a ticket uh, for that dinner. But then after that dinner, at 6.30, in uh, Kresge Auditorium? Yes. Uh, he, yes. Will, he will do a full-on lecture uh, about the eclipse, what to expect, um, how often they happen, what did it mean for different cultures historically. That would be one of the things that they address. It's going to be a, a pretty comprehensive program, and if you have any interest in the eclipse, I would definitely encourage you uh, to show up for that. And then, of course, on April 8th itself, uh, the observatory is going to be open. I believe they're opening at 1 or 1.30, and they'll go well past that 3.08 or so uh, time that, uh, that the eclipse is supposed to happen. Now, I'm sure everyone is wondering, why is this such a big deal? Well, I mean, it's why just is a, it such a big it's deal? Just, it's just another eclipse, right? <laughs> no, no. Uh, it turns out that uh, a total eclipse, uh, where the sun is completely blotted out from your vision, uh, crosses a given place every 300 years or so. So no one living today uh, saw the last one, nor will they see the next one. So it really is literally a once-in-a-lifetime event happening mm. in your backyard if you live on the south side of Kokomo. If you live right. on the north side, you're going to have to travel south to catch totality because we happen to be right on the line. So the shadow from the moon will come across the, the middle of the United States and it will just touch southern Kokomo. Uh, if you want a better look at it, Indianapolis and Bloomington are better spots. Uh, but we're going to get less than a minute of totality on the south side of Kokomo. You will get no totality north of downtown. Um, it's that It's that much of a line. As you go farther south, you get down to Bloomington, and you'll get almost four minutes of totality. So there will be a lot of people down there uh, watching that. I'm staying here. I think I'm going to go to IUK. Ed, yeah. you've got a different event. Right. Uh, we've, got a little, we've got a little party going on, and right now we're in the works trying to put together a metaphysical mashup party uh, here in town. Uh, right. I'll, more details on that later because the person who's doing that, uh, she might beat me in the head if I, if I don't reveal want, something. Don't want to but give we too did, much out. But we are, are having, we are getting these glasses. And so, uh, talk a little bit about these glasses. So these glasses are pretty cool. They are ISO certified, which is important. If you're going to get glasses to look at the eclipse, the ISO number and it's on the There'll inside. There'll be a close-up of this, everybody. So sure. we'll make sure everybody. Uh, you want to see that, and it needs to be that number. Last time that there was a total eclipse that went across the United States was in 2017. It went through areas of the Carolinas, and 
leading up to that event, there were a lot of counterfeit Eclipse glasses that hit the market through places like Amazon. They did not provide the needed protection to your eyes, uh, so you were risking some permanent damage by staring at the Eclipse uh, with those false ones. So make sure that you have an ISO certified pair of glasses before you look at that on April 8th. If you are going to one of these organized events, they'll most likely uh, at least instruct you on whether or not you have the proper glasses and hopefully like in the case of IUK right now They're giving away uh, these Eclipse glasses if you attend their events until they right. run out of supplies And because we want to get into the spirit of things uh, The Kokomo Lantern is going to provide some glasses as well. We'll give you details on how you'll be able to get those for free uh, We'll probably be near the end of March We're gonna have I think about 100 mm -hmm. pairs that we're just going to give away to our readers that want uh, want to be able to see the Sun uh, in totality, but don't uh, don't have the means or the uh, the supplies to do it otherwise. So yeah. we'll think that we're going to reach out mm -hmm. and uh, and help out a little bit. I mean, 100 isn't a lot, but uh, I, I don't want to miss this. I hope you don't either. I hope that you want your kids and and uh, well, parents and grandparents, everybody to see a once yeah. in a lifetime event like it, this. And it, uh, I saw the one. Uh, I think it was in 2017. Uh, I had to drive to Kentucky to to see that. That was that was pretty awesome. One of the things that I want to do in this program is I'd like to start early in the program by uh, mentioning and correcting my screw ups from the previous program. And I'm sure that there are plenty of them, but there was one in particular in last week's program that was uh, uh, in need of correction. And that is, I attributed the uh, the invention of uh, Deralite, a, a goldish metallic alloy used in dinnerware at the turn of the 20th century, I attributed the invention of that metal to Elwood Haynes. Uh, he did not invent uh, Deralite, though he did manufacture it and did uh, did distribute it. So, I mean, he was involved in, in that uh, product, but did not come up with that product. So I stand corrected. It is definitely my fault, and uh, I'll try to do better next time. Well, hey, uh, yeah, I think you got your phone. I think some, somebody told us who it was that that uh, my phone's kind of busy, but yeah, we'll 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 put uh, we'll, we'll put, put his, his picture up there. there and, I want to say yeah, maybe right. even a link at some point so yes, you can definitely. go learn about the guy himself. Yeah. Ohio, I believe, is where he's from. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. But the name escapes me at the moment. But hey, I was wrong. I want you to know I was wrong. If you catch something I've said wrong and you know it, you can prove it. Hey, give me a call. Drop me a line. We'll fix it. Uh, and if there's just something you'd like us to talk about or uh, people right. you'd like to interview, again, reach out to us, kokomolantern at gmail.com, or you can give me a call at 765-210-3442. I'll take your call as long as it's between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., let's say. Uh, if it's outside of that, I may not respond right away because I do need to get as much sleep as possible. I, I missed out on decades of beauty sleep. So I got a time. Just right? decades, decades Just and decades. That's I, all right. You're making I, up for making it. Making up for lost time. Making yeah. up for lost time now. So, but the one thing I'm not is dead. I am quite alive. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, there were many uh, Howard County residents in 2023 who passed away specifically due to drug overdoses. Uh, the Howard County coroner released his annual report for 2023 uh, yesterday and pointed out that in 2023, we had 36 drug overdose deaths in Howard County. Now that seems like a very large number. It's actually uh, a pretty significant uh, progress on reducing that number. Yeah. Uh, we're now close to the state average with 36 deaths where we were way above that from a period at least reaching back to 2017. Uh, we've made some progress on that front. Doesn't mean that the problem has gone away. Uh, or that we need to be less vigilant in the way that we enforce and inform and help uh, rehabilitate when it comes to substance, substance abuse and addiction. Um, but there's good progress. I was really happy to see that Dr. Matt Oliver, he's the CEO of Turning Point uh, System of Care. They provide uh, rehabilitative and recovery services. Uh, he was pretty uh, excited about the uh, the drop in the yeah. fatality number so I'm going to echo that excitement knowing that hey we've done a good thing in Howard County so if you have been a part of that if you are a recovering addict or you have helped a friend or family member through that by by uh, direct intervention or by directing them to the proper uh, resources to help get them uh, clean and sober uh, 
congratulations and thank you. Uh, thank you to all of our professionals out there that are working in the field. It's something that we've needed for a long time, and That's it's right. great to see it come online uh, as strongly as it has that we're actually moving the needle. So That's right. pretty, bit, pretty happy about uh, the, the overdose death report. Uh, right. As happy as you can be about death, I suppose. And if you're interested in uh, if something happens or if you, you have need of any kind of information, up on the screen we will have uh, some numbers to call, some websites to look at. Turning Point's done an excellent job. Uh, also, too, we've got uh, the uh, the Narcan machines that are oh, yeah. in, the, in the libraries. Mm -hmm. uh, and those things are there uh, for for use, and they, they've saved people's lives. They, yeah, they handed out literally thousands of those kits last year. You have to think that that had a positive impact on on survivability because that uh, immediately sobers them up it stops the overdose in yeah. its tracks uh, as i understand they come out pretty angry uh when they come to because their uh, their high is gone but they're, but they're alive breathing. yeah exactly yes, they're alive the, so I'll, I'll take a little anger yeah. as long as you're still here and we can we can help you back i'll be angry and alive instead of angry and dead exactly. yeah. now there there was a pretty dismaying uh statistic in that report and that was that we had 19 suicides in Howard County last year, which is uh, a large and increasing number. Uh, un unfortunately, we are not alone in seeing an, an uptick in suicides. It's happening nationally as a trend. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of context on that number, so we don't know ages or, or circumstances, things like that. Um, I worry greatly. Uh, that the suicide rate is hitting our younger people more than our older people. I know anecdotally we've had a few uh, just north of us over the last couple years among student body. Uh, that uh, with a teenager it seems to be so much more right. dangerous right. because uh, they tend to follow each other. Right. And you worry about right. it becoming a, a trend within a within a small school population. If one goes, now right. do you have three? Do you have five? Right. Um, which is why which is why when those things do happen, uh, the schools will react pretty. And I, I'm really proud of the schools here, particularly in Howard County. They react with counseling and react with being able to give resources. And if you are in the, any kind of situation like that, I don't care how old you are. If you're thinking, uh, if those th thoughts come to you, uh, you need to uh, reach out and grab somebody. Reach yeah. out. And Touch somebody. We'll make sure. Yeah. Right. We'll, make, we'll make sure that we've got the numbers on the screen. Yeah. We've got. There's a local number. There's also a national number, which I think is 988, but I'm not going to swear to that. So if we look up there. Don't right. don't trust yeah, what well, I said. Otherwise, I'm going to have to give you another correction next week. Yeah. Um, but so, but yeah. there's help out there, and that's the thing. Absolutely. That's the thing to know. And uh, and reach out. Uh, if you see someone, uh, particularly with social media, a young or old person on social media, then you see anything like that. I mean, I'm sure uh, everyone talks about the social media police, but they, that's kind of stuff has saved lives. And Absolutely. That's, and, that, and that's really, that's what we are as, as a community, is to help each other. So if someone, if you think someone's ratted you out, but you're still alive, then thank them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, mental health is a, an ongoing concern at all levels of society. It's something that we've ignored uh, and stigmatized uh, over the years. There's a recent push, and it's in a very positive push, to increase mental health uh, resources in our community and I think probably nationally. Um, we've dealt with a shortage of workers uh, and licensed professionals in that field. That seems to be addressed somewhat. Uh, places like Turning Point are taking on mental health concerns as well as addiction concerns because they really are tied. Addiction is a mental disease. Um, so we're seeing an increase in mental health resources uh, being made available, and it is no more important than, than in the schools. That's probably one of the most vital places we can have. I, I listened to uh, uh, Steve Deshawn, who is the superintendent of Taylor Schools, uh, recently talk about uh, the challenges that his school has with mental health treatment and, and resources. Uh, they have a mental health uh, professional in every one of their school buildings, which is fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, it was funded through some of the COVID-related relief funds, and they're going to quickly, uh, at the end of this year, run out of enough funding to, to keep those individuals in each one of the schools. I worry that that's not just unique to Taylor, uh, that we may have some shortages and that kind of funding across the board in our school systems. So, uh, you know, this would be a good topic to contact your legislators and say, look, the next time you're putting together budget we need more money in mental health resources for the schools i don't care if it's a private school or a public school if they're getting public money and we can debate the the 
the wisdom of, of hmm. giving you know for profit schools public money. I'm not going to get into that today. But if they're getting not public, in this not in this episode. No. Yeah. But if they're, if they're getting public money, then then money for those mental health resources needs to be made available right alongside that. Uh, quickest way to improve a test score is to improve someone's mental well being. Right. Uh, and Taylor's a pretty remarkable story. I'm going to have a story here in a couple of days about some of the things that they're doing with their student body to make a difference. Oh, you're going to have a story. Um, I'm going to actually. And have where's a story. the story going to be? It's going to be on the Kokomo Lantern Kokomo website. Lantern. We have www.kokomolantern.com. You'll be able to read this hopefully before the end of the week. We'll see just how motivated I am. But we, but there's a lot of other things you can read in the Kokomo Lantern. Uh, we have, uh, and we'll talk about a couple of those things also too. But uh, one one thing to remember: we are the what we consider the premier 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 online news, sports, and entertainment site. And yes, here in we've Howard redefined County. that word. Mm -hmm. uh, it Which doesn't, word? Uh, Which it, word did we uh, redefine? Premier. Redefined? Doesn't premier. Mean, okay. Doesn't mean what you think it means. Okay. I'm guessing. But hey, we're good enough. I am enough. <laughs> Say that to yourself every morning in the mirror. I am enough. You'll be amazed uh, how you suddenly are enough. But Remember? also, too, we have we are for a once again, and you're looking at us right now into podcasting. Uh, we have a full lineup of podcasts, and uh, you can see those through uh, CocomoLantern.com, CocomoLantern.substack.com. You can see it from our YouTube page. Uh, soon, our Instagram page is going to get updated uh, once once and I get. And of course, our Facebook presences. Oh, definitely those two. Yeah. So those if you great. think, oh, I can't find the latest podcast. You know, we're putting it out there. Uh, and if you can't, let us know. We'll find a way to get it to you. Yes. Uh, Write a letter to your congressman. Say, where is my Coco Lantern podcast network? Oh, let's not do that. I, I, <laughs> that's a little far. She did they, visit town the other day. Maybe you could have said Oh, yeah, something. Victoria oh, well, Sparks. Did you go to Victoria Sparks' town hall? I did hall? not. No, I, I we did, did not. not that, was a, that was something that I think I told you I was going to put up, and I forgot all about it. Uh, so. and I, was, uh, I was busy working another uh, commitment at that time and couldn't make it. But, uh, yeah. hey, thank you, uh, Representative Sparks. Uh, for visiting uh, Howard County and mm -hmm. letting us know that you're right. now running for a different office altogether. Running? Running? You mean this is an election year? Oh, yeah. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, she resigned from one because she wants to run for another. And that's fine. Oh, wow. You know, I didn't see that. That I need to read the Kokomo Lantern more. And you should, too. Well, that's not in the Kokomo Lantern because we don't do a whole lot of statewide politics. True. Only when it seems to direct us effectively and uh, direct us effectively. Affect us directly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, but th but this is election year, right? I didn't know if you wanted is. to segue yet or not. Uh, well, I mean, we can talk about the election. Uh, you know, we haven't had great turnouts at elections historically, and it just seems to be getting worse. But this is a presidential election year, which means mm -hmm. we will have a larger turnout, anywhere from forty to better than fifty percent. I don't know how big it's gotten, wow. but but yeah, when you're when you're cheering on a fifty percent turnout, you know there's something wrong here. But uh, we're going to cheer a 50 percent turnout in 2024 for the presidential politics. Mm -hmm. uh, but the important offices aren't at the national level. Nope. Um, that that president spot isn't going to directly affect you nearly as much as you think it will, even though you're going to spend a lot of brain space on it. Let's talk about those local offices that are important. Uh, you know, if if you really have a problem with your taxes. Those are decided locally. Uh, you know, if you have a problem with the condition of your streets or your parks, uh, those are decided locally. Nobody at the state level, nobody at the national level is going to come down and fix those problems. But you're going to vote for people every time that we have an election who can. And that's why you get involved in elections at the local level. If there's something going on in the community that you don't like or that you would like to see improved, well, running is the best way to, to get that. You know, do it yourself. But... Alternately, get involved in local politics and back the people who back the things that you believe need to be changed. Mm. No. No. So what way could I get involved in a nonpartisan way sure. in local politics? And I'll let you well, have you that. Could, you could, uh, and I'm not going to say volunteer, though it practically is at the rate that they're paying, you could uh, agree to work election day or work the early voting booths uh, leading up to election day. There's a, a habitual endemic shortage of poll workers um, and they tend to be closer to my age than my child's age, let's say for instance, uh, without you know casting too many uh, dispersions. Uh, there's only a, a certain amount of time that that's going to be able to persist before we have a critical shortage in poll workers and since there seems to be so much concern uh, expressed in some circles about the validity and security of our elections, 
Um, it seems to me that we would want responsible people in the position, and to do that, you've got to pay a responsible wage. And Howard County just agreed to increase their wages uh, for poll workers last week. Um, if I didn't know what they were getting paid before, I would say they didn't give a raise. Um, it's laughable to think that someone is going to give 12 hours of work for $8.33 an hour in Howard County to go sit confined in a building for all that time, not allowed to leave, not allowed to communicate. It's a 12 hour day, isn't it? It, it is a 12 hour sit 12 on hour your day. butt and process people as they vote job that you don't get to leave. There's no lunch break out of the building. Um, that's that's a lot to ask a younger person or an older person to do for $8.33 an hour and to think that that is the wage increase uh, is a little scary. And that's just for early voting. They pay a little bit more uh, on election day and if you hold a judge or inspector position they pay a little bit more on that. So I think you top out if you are either a judge or an inspector at one of the polling sites uh, making less than $19 an hour. So at least you're making uh, better than the average wage rate uh, in Howard County for unskilled, uneducated workers, let's be clear. Um, you're not going to you're going to have a problem filling the positions at the wage rate. Yeah, because you got to take a day off. You got, and right. even if you're retired, I mean, it's still a day out of what you are doing. Or and of course, you've got to be there, and you've got to you know adhere by their rules. Right. So and yeah, I mean, it comes out that I'm going to hand you a hundred dollars to go work for twelve hours. Yeah. Now maybe that maybe that's attractive to some people, but I would think that uh, it would be difficult to attract a large pool of. Uh, of poll workers at that wage rate. So perhaps they need to revisit that again before we get to the fall. Uh, we'll see how that goes in the spring. Uh, obviously, they've had problems filling positions leading up to this point, so uh, I, I hope that this makes a difference. Uh, I at least applaud them for making the attempt, but I think that it's rather myopic to think that that wage rate is going to be an incentive. So that's, that's kind of where I stand on that. There you go. There's a there's an opinion piece. We don't do a whole lot of those. If you look at our print product, you don't find an opinion section. No. Uh, but we've got them. Yeah, we've got opinions. And, and this will be probably the only forum that I use to express them. And they well, may be completely off the wall. And you may uh, think, man, he's just an idiot. And uh, you're probably not wrong. I mean, I'm doing this for a living, right? Uh, <laughs> I could have a nice... I'm sorry. I resemble that remark. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it turns out that, that you can eat doing it, and that was the whole point. So I'm happy, and thank you for supporting the Kokomo Lantern at this point. You know what? Oh, you know what, what would help would help you eat? Uh, what would help me eat? Uh, advertisers. Yes, we uh, love advertisers, uh, by yes, the way. we do. As a matter of fact, yes. you can sponsor this podcast or any of the podcasts on the Kokomo Lantern Podcast Network. I'm sure that's what you wanted was an ad right in the middle of this. Um, but, uh, hey, we're sure. pretty proud of the programs that we've got up so far. You know, there are seven programs, seven days. So we're getting you content just about every day in case there's some, uh, you know, real problem. I'm not going to swear that it's going to happen every day, but uh, especially since we've got one that's going live and they've got lives too. But we're doing our best to make sure you've got ongoing mm -hmm. content on a variety of topics that you're going to enjoy, whether it's the outdoors, whether it's politics, whether it's community, whether it's history, uh, or if you've got, uh, you know, a rather macabre bent to yourself and you want to know what goes on behind the scenes in a mortuary. We We've got a little bit of everything. We've got more programs that could be in development. I would love to put out more programs than what we have right now. I've got at least four more that would love to join the network. But I can tell you that this is a two-man operation. You're looking at it. Um, I don't know that we can handle 11 shows a week. Um, so we're looking for some help. If you got somebody who uh, who has some skill in podcasting and thinks, hey, you know what, we would like to work for Peanuts, uh, just, you know, Give us a call. Elephants. Yeah, no elephants. No elephants allowed. Uh, we, we will pay. We will pay. Oh, definitely. Yeah, um, definitely. definitely. And, uh, you know, if we have that additional product, then, you know, the hope is the advertising will follow and you'll be able to continue to enjoy Kokomo Lantern uh, product and the oh. podcast network. So well, that's enough self-promotion. I feel all a right, little got, dirty from it all. You've got about three minutes. I have three minutes left, so let's hit a couple things I like. Well, and, well I don't want to sound like anybody else here, so I'm going to revise that. Hey, here's something maybe you might want to check out if you've got a little time, and that would be the Love Fusion Gallery. This is a uh, a Valentine's 
uh, themed event uh, involving artists from here in the local community uh, putting on a little affair at the Rhine Hall uh, Entertainment Center yep. on North Union Street. Yes. It's going to happen this Saturday. It starts at 6.30, so you'll be able to uh, view uh, works of art from local artists, meet those artists and talk with them, even go home with a painting if it strikes your fancy. At the same time, you're in a great venue. There will be some food and drink involved, uh, and it's free to attend. They just would really like to have you come out and participate in the art that they're presenting. And we have a vibrant and exciting, in my opinion, art community. If you haven't seen yes. some of the public art that's done by mm -hmm. some of these art association members or been into artworks there, on, uh, I think it's 210 mm -hmm. North Main Street. Right now, Black Pearls is going on, right? Black, Black Pearls, Pearls is going on right now. Mm -hmm. I went to the uh, reception on that a couple Fridays ago. A lot of great work there. There was a couple pieces that I thought. In fact, if you look at the Kokomo Lantern uh, page, I put one of the pieces up. I love this piece. It's a it's a woman's face and it's like half on fire, but not graphically so, uh, impressionistically so. And it's a beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. So pieces like that you'll be able to see at uh, at this Love Fusion event. So I'd say definitely check that out this Saturday if you've got time. And the last thing we'll talk about is the United Way of Howard County and Tipton County. They are back in business. They are doing great things. We're in the middle of the funding campaign. Disclosure: I'm on the board of directors, so this is not an unbiased shill. We're our goal is within reach. We are almost there, and the funding campaign ends in early March. We'll have a celebration in mid-March uh, to close that out. But, uh, you know, we, we, we want enough money to handle all the programs uh, and grants that we give out each year. We want money to be able to cover all the behind-the-scenes expenses, and we are so close. Uh, so here in the last uh, three to four weeks, if you haven't given to United Way, if you haven't pledged or you haven't had them into your workplace to start a campaign, hey, reach out to uh, to them. I think it's 457-4357 is the phone number. Double check that or I'll have another correction next week. Um, but give them a call. Tell them, hey, we're interested in giving the United Way and the many programs that, uh, that benefit from that funding every year. We're back on track, and we're going to be doing some great things in the community. We want you to be a part of it. We want you to feel good about the donations you make to the nonprofits here. United Way is the safest, securest, and most reliable way to get that money into the hands that you want to see benefit. So please consider giving to the United Way. That's all I have for this week, Ed, and I know I did a lot of talking, uh, so I apologize. That's for what just... you, no, that's what you do. That's... So, hey, things are going great in Howard County. Uh, make sure to check out the Eclipse on April 8th. Make sure to go to IUK or find Find your favorite place to view that here in Southern uh, Howard County. And like we said, we're going to have some uh, Eclipse classes uh, for giveaway in the weeks leading up to the event. Um, support the United Way, they're doing great things. Uh, Howard County needs to increase uh, again the wage rate for their poll workers. What else you want to talk, uh, recap there? Oh, uh, we also talked about uh, the, the good things going on at Turning Point. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, uh, mental health and death rates. Mental health, yes, definitely. Uh, so uh, actually, uh, that, that's been, it's been a pretty good week. And look for us next week right here. Uh, on your favorite station, of course, if we call them stations anymore. Uh, I don't yeah. think and we'll, we'll try to get somebody else on here to talk uh, besides just the two of us. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we'll actually interview them, ask them questions, and let them We've got some you. guests coming. We've got some we guests do, coming. Yeah. We've got if you want to be a guest on the show and, and you don't suck worse than we do, <laughs> uh, come on. We're looking for anybody who can upgrade the Have quality you, of the Would you program. like to see that on a job application? Does not suck worse than anybody else that exactly. works here. I know Jim works there. I'm better than Jim. <laughs> you should hire me. I'm afraid that we're going to sit somebody in the chair and they're going to say that about me. Say, hey, I know oh. Muncie. I work harder than Muncie. You give me the job. Oh, I may boy. hand it to you. Oh, uh, <laughs> you got it. Hey, everyone. This is The Lamp from the Kokomo Lantern, the premier. Let's say it again. Premier. premier. Source for online news, sports, and features brought to you every morning by Pat Muncie and Ed Fonts. And a host of others. Absolutely. All right. Thanks again for watching. See you later.